Hello, we are here with research software hour number something. 11. 11, yes. And our topic of the day is Conda. So why Conda? So Conda is a tool which is used to well, originally install Python packages, but is actually useful for many other kinds of installation. And it's basically one of our recommended ways of installing software on other systems and making a reproducible environment. But yet people have lots of trouble with it because it can be a little bit difficult to get started and understand how it works. So we're here to make a collaborative instruction manual for it. And the people you see presenting are... Radovan? Yes, Radovan Bastrenzo. Um, I'm more the virtual environment guy, so I will, I'm not using Conda on a daily basis, so I'll be doing some learning today, asking questions. Yes. And then Anne? I'm Anne, yeah, I'm Anne, so I'm from Oslo, and I'm using Conda very often, but I'm not an expert, <laughs> and I will also ask questions. <laughs> and I'm Richard, I'm from Helsinki, and well... I have to use Conda, but I wouldn't call myself much of an expert. So I've done my fair share of trying to make stuff work. So I guess let's see what we can do together. So how does this work? So Research Software Hour is an interactive programming or programming show. You find a HackMD document, which is in the channel description, and I've also pasted on Twitch here. At any point, you can ask a question in here, and we'll either answer on the stream or we will type the answer into here, back into HackMD. So to get you started, we have a question there that, uh, who is it, Radovan found. What is your favorite animal, which is also a programming language or tool or library? So try to answer that. So, should we get started? Let's get started. And maybe first let's talk about what, what Conda is. So today we'll talk about yeah. Conda, Anaconda, Miniconda, Mamba, Mini Mamba, different snakes. Is there a Mini Mamba? Yeah, there is a Mini Mamba. <laughs> Sounds really cute. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so what is Conda? Who can answer this for us? And we are asking the audience? Well, I'm asking one of you two mainly. Okay. <laughs> what I think it is, um, for me, it's a package manager, open source yeah. manager. I guess that's how I describe it too. I, I would think yeah. it's very popular in the Python community. Mm -hmm. But personally, I don't use it for Python <laughs> only. I mean, I use it yeah. for Python, but not for Python. Yeah. So I know I have at least one tool that uses it to deploy in our environment. And I know the other things are in there. So package manager, so what does that even mean? So it means that you can install other software which has been prepared by someone else. And there are these for operating systems and things like this, but the real benefit of Anaconda is that you can install it yourself anywhere. And you can make these different environments so that different projects have different sets of software installed. So why is that important? Yeah, I could also add that, so you can have your own, like you can create these channels, and I think later we'll talk about mm -hmm. channels, and, uh, and I can say that um, I'm mostly using, so another popular package man management system for Python would be the PyPI, Python Package Index, and we mm -hmm. talked about it in previous episodes. And that one I use normally for stuff that is purely Python, or mostly Python, or which has a Python interface. But Conda is more general than that. It, mm -hmm. One can put pure Python packages on it, one can put mixed Python and something else code on it, but it can also be used to distribute uh, packages which don't contain any, py any Python at all. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think you've done that, haven't you? You've distributed some C++ 
program via Tonga? Or do I remember wrong? Yes, yes, I remember it. But uh, with a lot of help mm. from mm. a colleague and an intern. So I've done it, but I would not be able to just do it just like that. Yeah. Yeah, but that's so a good possible. point, rather than just uh, with the help of the internet. That's the main goal of using Conda. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. You get help. Mm -hmm. So, let's see. So there's Conda versus Anaconda. So, how would you answer that question? Actually, yeah. So I guess... Conda is a tool, no? It's a tool. Conda is the tool it's that installs stuff. Anaconda is the distribution of a bunch of stuff packed together that mm -hmm. like all the most popular Python packages packed together. Should we talk is about it an ecosystem? No, is it more on, I don't know exactly mm -hmm. how you would define Anaconda. Is it, no. it contains all the different channels? Yeah, I guess Anaconda also has the channels. Hmm. Well, anyway, I guess we can go on. Maybe by the end, we can figure out what it really means. <laughs> Maybe this is the kind of thing, what does Anaconda and Conda mean to you? Okay, Conda versus PIP versus other things. Do we need to talk about that? I think we've already clarified it enough, don't you? Yeah, I think rather than yeah. mention it. Yes, yeah. I'm just also browsing a bit about what is Conda, Anaconda. I mean, mm -hmm. Anaconda is a company. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. Then there is Anaconda Cloud, and mm -hmm. then there is Conda, the, yeah. the tool. This maybe is on Anaconda Cloud the equivalent of PyPI. No, I think it's even more because they have uh, cloud computing behind it as well. Oh. I mean, you, you can even buy it. Oh, okay. Yeah, then you're right. It's probably okay. Well, I'm not sure well, actually. We can try to figure this out over time. <laughs> okay, so Conda installation. How do you all install Conda? I always use the command line locally. Is that what? Yes, Download the mini Conda, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mini script. Conda and installed by command line. So you download the shell script, right? And then you do bash and, right. and either the Anaconda shell script or the Miniconda shell script. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I On Windows, I will double click. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I think it does the same. From the yeah. Behind. I guess we can. Are you, are you going to show how to install it or? Yeah, so I will. Yeah, I think we should, yeah. So will I be the demonstrator here? I've come prepared. Okay. Or does someone else want to? Sounds good. Yeah, no, I'll sounds start. good. Okay, so here is my screen, or more like a part of my screen. So I've gone and I did a web search for Miniconda and came here and found a Linux installer and downloaded this. So it's already downloaded, so I run it. And I run that by bash. No, Miniconda. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see what happens. License agreement. Well, do I accept? Yes. Of course, we never read it because we never do. So Miniconda will install the home Arcadars Miniconda 3, which is a pretty good location. So I will accept this default. So I always have only one Conda or Miniconda installation at a time. So I do, oops, that shouldn't have Which been. Which is yes. recommended, you know, to have only one. Uh, oh, yes. What is happening? So I did it again because I typed yes for the path to install it. Oh, but, okay. <laughs> <laughs> which is not the right not the answer. Right. <laughs> okay, so what this does is it takes this thing that we downloaded and it has all of these Conda packages ready and then puts them into the mini Conda directory. And now it asks, do you want the installer to initialize mini Conda by running Conda init, yes or no? So personally, I always do no here. What do you all do? I do yes. <laughs> yes. 
So I did DS until today, but I was always a bit unhappy with it because I didn't know it modified something and I was never really sure what it mm. modifies. Mm -hmm. And today I researched a little bit more and I decided to say no and to mm. activate it explicitly every time. So I created an alias so yeah. that I can do it. Uh, yeah, yes, which is probably a very good approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, it changes your bash. Right. Yes. It's adding a lot of uh, yeah. things to initialize, yeah. which I sometimes things. edit and uh, mm -hmm. disable. And there is nothing wrong about it, but sometimes yeah. I want to have an isolated virtual environment. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then I don't want the anaconda, and then I wasn't sure where to mm -hmm. where is this activated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think you're so right. It's a better approach to yeah. say no. So should we say no or do yes and then show what it does and then say you should do no? <laughs> I mean, I think the more typical is to say yes. I think so. Yeah. Maybe show how. Yeah. How Let's show yes. And, and what okay. it does and what it modifies and how to get rid of it later if you if you yeah. decide yeah. to get rid of it. So what does it modify here? If I go to the bottom of bash RC. No, it's not the bottom because it's adding a lot of uh, um, lines. So okay. yeah, or yeah. this. Here, so this is what yeah. it's added. And there is some conda setup function. So it basically is running this to get a shell hook and then test if it exists and runs it and then adds this mini conda path into the path. Yeah, so because if it doesn't find this conda.sh in your profile, but it is mm -hmm. only adding it to mm -hmm. the path. Mm -hmm. so I think it does a bit more. Yeah. This conda .sh. Well, anyway, so I will have to restart my shell in order to see this take effect. And yes, it did restart. Oh, yes. And then you see this base. And now I see base here. So that yes. means I'm in the conda environment. So this is not what I would normally want. Normally, I, like Radovan said, would always want this to be explicitly activated only. So conda is a program, and it exists. So well, how would we activate this if we didn't say yes? I would do source uh, mini conda bin activate. And as far as I know, that takes us to the same place. If we want to deactivate Conda, we can do deactivate. Okay, so they say these days use Conda, Conda deactivate. But surprisingly, there is some remainder here and it leaves a Conda program in the path. Does it? Oh, uh, let's see. So, yeah, mm -hmm. so it's added this to my path. Mm, this condiment yeah, directory. Okay. And if I list that, then I see there's just conda in there. Just conda. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I see. So, this is yeah, interesting. Um, So I will explicitly activate it again, and here I am. So what do we get when we have Conda activated? So there's Conda in our path. If I check what my current Python is, I see Python is coming from MiniConda3 bin Python, which is overriding the system Python here. And there's a Python 3, there's a pip in there. Well, I guess we can look in here and see exactly what we have. So we've got basically a bunch of basic programs regarding or about Python and, well, I guess support utilities needed. Okay, but this is Miniconda, not Anaconda. If this was Anaconda, there would be a bunch of useful Nothing software more. installed. Now we have nothing. So what do we do next? So can I ask before we go on? Yeah. So should should we install Miniconda? Should we install Anaconda? What is the recommendation? Hmm. What do we do? What do we recommend? Yeah. What are the pros and cons? Yeah. I use Miniconda, I think. Yes. 
I would always recommend an uh, mini founder because it's smaller mm -hmm. and it is already, I don't know how big it is, but it's like not that 50 small. 50 megabytes. Minicon is 50 megabytes. Oh, yeah. that's very tiny, so that's nice. Yeah. yeah. And I think on the terminal you can do conda list. I think it will show it will show you now what the miniconda comes. Yeah, that's with. a good thing. Yeah. Yes. So Anaconda is 500 megabytes. Mm -hmm. uh, miniconda is this big. Mm -hmm. uh, that's much nicer. <laughs> yeah. And this and is what is. List, yes. Yeah, on the list, and we see very little. Not that you don't much, just you don't even have NumPy, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So one argument is smaller size, so the mm -hmm. installation is faster. It's also I like to install all the dependencies that I need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quickly. Anyway, into an isolated environment. So if we don't install it into the base environment, then maybe we can talk later what what right. is the base and what are the derived environments. Yeah. So I prefer Miniconda. Yeah. So should we go into installing stuff by first making an environment and talk about what that is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So we do that, I believe, by Conda. Is it create? Yeah. Yes. And minus then minus name. Name. So let's call this a sample project. Okay, so you can start with it, otherwise mm -hmm. you can specify the size somewhere, too, which I do sometimes. Uh, or a list of package already you, you want. Right. I guess you can give a, a, an environment YAML already. Right. Yes, you can also do that. I can agree. What which is normally way? what we will do ultimately. Um, Should we start with nothing or A something? simple one. I think you made I don't Python know. equals 3.8 about that. Okay. Yeah. Maybe as a start, let's start without. Let's assume we don't have an environment at YAML, mm -hmm. and we install packages into it, and later we can yeah. discuss how about oh, yeah, installing how to from environment mm -hmm. YAML. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Python equals three point eight. The following packages will be installed. Well, this looks so far pretty similar to what we've already installed. So we do yes. So where is it installing this exactly? Is it's it in the in sub, uh, yeah, in the in your home there is a env folder. In here? No, no, in your miniconda. Ah, oh, it's in miniconda. Yeah, it's not a dot. Yeah. Miniconda. And there is a env. Right. Okay. And here and we you see will have all your environment. Yeah. And this looks a lot like. Mini it's content, the same I as guess. yeah. It should be the same, and so I, I see... seem to remember it does some symlink if this is the same, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So here, like if you check the Bing, because we have the same version. Yeah. No, it's yeah. It's, I'm not, not sure this is. But I also do remember a lot of symlinks in some environment I made. So. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So anyway, now that we have the sample environment. Now, everything we do will only be located in there. So we won't, won't mess up any other project if we install some other version. But we need to activate it first. OK, so just by creating it, we have not created it. Okay, oh, yeah, you so. just create it, yeah. And then you activate, uh, yeah. OK. Yes, and so now here are. we see my prompt says sample project. So I'm in there. So now you can do a conda list again. Oh yeah, I hadn't. I did the list in the other one. Oops. Oh well. Well, it looks pretty similar. Yeah, it, it is the same. I think okay. we installed the same version. I think. Yeah. So should we install something? You want to install yes. NumPy? Sounds great. And can I ask a question, which is the question that came up on the chat? Mm -hmm. So once Miniconda is installed, is there any difference in speed in terms of Miniconda Anaconda? Hmm. Actually, when you install new packages, there is a difference because you have less packages in Miniconda. So installing a new package will, uh, because it needs to resolve the dependencies, mm -hmm. it will be faster with Miniconda. But otherwise, in yeah. terms of performance, when you call the package, I, I don't think there is any difference. 
Yeah. I mean, even the installation time will be a big benefit because as we're going to see, this can be very slow. So let's con the list now. And we see there's NumPy and a few other things that are new. Do you want to install something else? On us? Yes. That makes sense. Do you want to install a specific version of Pandas, maybe? We can try as a demonstration 1.0. One, and let's see. So it took a little bit, but we say yes. Okay. Should we demonstrate that you can install something with pip also? With pip into Aconda environment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's not really recommended we... that your package is available in Aconda. Yeah. So maybe install a package that is not available yeah. in the Anaconda. Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, you can do both. So. Yeah. What's a package that's not in Conda? Uh, you can pick one of mine, which I put on PyPI, which is a uh, run test. Pip install run test. Pip install oh, yes. run test. I okay. put it on Conda. Let's see. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. So this looks like the normal pip install thing. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do Conda list. And we see there's run test, and it says installed from PyPI. OK. Yeah. Seems good. What about something on ConzaForge? Should we install from a different channel? Yeah. So what are channels? Or are we going to talk about it later? Yeah, maybe, so we, maybe should we should talk, talk to them now. <laughs> yeah. OK. So. So what's the point of a channel? Hmm. Well, on PyPI, there's only one source for each package. So if you have a package, say, called run test, you're the only one that can upload it. And it's equal to all the other packages people install. But Conda has this thing called channels, which basically you register a channel and then you can upload any packages inside of that channel, which might have the same name as packages outside of the channel. Is this correct? Yes. Yeah. So I see it a little bit as a, so maybe you want to distribute packages, but you don't want to, or you cannot put it on Conda, what is it called? I mean, the default, I don't think you can as a yeah. member as of a... the community, Add right. a package exactly in this mm -hmm. an mm -hmm. default anaconda channel. And so I think it's really about like curation that yeah uh, mm -hmm. somebody else needs to decide. And if you have a channel, well, you decide yourself. So you right. can curate your own set of packages, and you don't really have to ask them that. Yeah. But I guess. I mean, the... Conda Forge is a bit special in that sense yeah. because mm -hmm. it's it's like the community based yeah channel, Conda channel. But I guess the point there is to build things with different options somehow, because in PyPI, you can coexist, but you can't coexist with the same package. Let's say if you want to build something that requires certain, like a different NumPy that's compiled with certain options, then you can do that. But you can do that uh, in, yeah. in one channel. I think that's mostly because it is not available. Like maybe a good example is, at least I presume there's a NumPy in Conda Forge and a NumPy in Anaconda. And they're probably different. Yes, I you guess know. so. Maybe we should show how to search for packages. Is it Conda search? It's Google for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually faster. Yeah, I don't know Actually. if it's possible via command line. Hmm. Yeah, there is a command line, but I, I, I don't think this is yeah. easier than Googling. Anaconda.org. So we search NumPy. I mean, if you search for Conda Forge, it will be in this anaconda.org slash Conda Forge slash NumPy. Yeah. 
So I think the main, for instance, it, it, NumPy is a good example. I think it's it's updated more frequently in mm -hmm. Conda form yeah. compared to this uh, the main screen. Yeah. So here we see the list of all the NumPy packages, and there's the owner and the package. So we see Conda Forge has a NumPy installed 13 million times, and all these other versions too. So this one is a little bit out of date, an older version. Um, in Anaconda, we see the primary Anaconda channel has one installed 2 million times. And well, yeah. So maybe we should go on. So what are we installing through Conda Forge? can install GDAL because it's not available in the mainstream. Oh, yeah. This GDAL? Yes. Okay. That's the most standard package for <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> okay. So that needed to be Conda install. Okay. And here we are still installing into the same environment that we created. Right. In yes. the sample project environment. So here we see it says this. It will install a lot if you go if you browse up. I think it will uh, show you. It mm. will install a lot of packages because it has lots of dependencies. Yeah, and most of them are coming from Conda Forge, and a few. I think from, all of them will come yeah. from Conda Forge. That's why. Except I'm not sure thing. you can mix uh, when with the dependencies with another channel. Hmm. I've always Which is can be an issue. Yeah. I've always assumed that you can mix channels, but it's a bad idea because then you start getting conflicts and well, the dependencies can't be resolved and you get into a huge disaster. I think you can mix, but I don't think you can publish a package in a channel mm. depend if it depends on another. That would make sense. Okay, from another channel, yeah. but I'm not sure. That would make a lot of sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is, actually that was really fast, a lot faster than I expected. I, okay. I told you, they improved <laughs> speed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So next up is making the environment.yaml file. At least that's what's next on our list. Is there anything we uh, need to do first? One thing we could show is that if we forgot what what environments we have on the machine. Oh yeah. Oh yes. There is conda info dash e. Yes. To That's see what, what are the environments on my machine. Hmm. The second question is then where are they? But uh, <laughs> well, this yeah. shows a path to them, luckily. Oh right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. and it shows a d default one is a, a star, no? In front. Uh, so you know the sample mm -hmm. project is the one you are in. Yes. It's conda end. Okay, I think I've always used conda end to list. Yes. That's the same actually. Yeah. Well. All right. Yeah. So we don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, time test is maybe more intuitive because I will yeah. update my little cheat sheet. Um. If you do conda info only, what does it do? Hmm. Oh, that's a... It prints a lot of things. Oh, for each Active environment? environment or... Location, big files, mm -hmm. oh, basically okay. all of the relevant stuff. Oh, yeah, okay. And it's only for the current environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. What other operations are there? Is there delete an environment yes. or uninstall yes. packages? I mean, we can yes. do that at the end of the yeah, show. Yeah, let's do that at the end. So at the end of the show, we should show how to deactivate and how to remove, how to mm -hmm. get rid of an environment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now maybe try to make the list of packages. You know, if you have. Mm. Here. To re if you don't remember what you have installed. Yeah. So you maybe mean. Do that. Make the environment YAML or make what? 
Yes, you were mentioning this uh, uh, from history for creating yeah. this. I'd like to see that. Yeah. Actually. <laughs> Let's see what Conda and export does. So this puts well, a lot of things here. And this shows everything that's installed. So the name of the environment is sample project. It has these two channels activated. And these are all the dependencies, as in what will be installed. And this is everything currently installed. So we see it includes both the name of the package and then mm. the current version number and a build number. At least I think this is a build number or something like that. Um, I don't know. Or build. It looks big for a build number. Yeah. Or hash of something. But yeah, it must be a hash. Or but one. these are the same. It's weird. So I don't know. something. Anyway, I think once you go to these trailing numbers, it somehow identifies exactly which source package was built. Or how it was compiled, something like that. So this is enough to completely reproduce an environment. Should we go ahead and demonstrate that? Yeah. So I'll take this and I'll save it to a file. So traditionally it would be called environment.yaml. So I had made this sample project before. So I will come to end export The file name is traditionally called environment.yaml. So you would do this and get environment.yaml. And from Actually, I always give a name, a meaningful name to the uh, YAML. That's probably because a better idea. Because if you have the 10 different environments, how, mm -hmm. how do you differentiate them? Hmm. How do you store them in different locations? Yeah, if you have, yeah. Like they are typically per project, then I would put one into the project. Oh, yeah. you put it with a project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sometimes yeah. I just put the YAML on. Yes, but that's a good uh, yeah. thing. OK. Because like the advantage of keeping the standard name would be that um, things like binder pick it up. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's yeah. good. Yeah, that's good point. Yeah. So let's say we wanted to make a new environment based on this. What would we do? Or what's the point of this? So now we know exactly what's installed. So I can take this and move to a cluster or another computer or wherever it may be. And then we can recreate exactly the same thing. So we know that all the software will be the same. Yeah. Which is what we could do now is we could deactivate the current environment. Mm -hmm. We could create a new one. And then we install uh, the new one from that environment of YAML. We could try that. Yeah. yeah. And we can imagine that we are now on a different computer. Yeah. So I've deactivated with Conda deactivate. And then I'm using conda and create to make the new one. So what do we, what's the, so the is it E or? So you, we give it a name, we give it a new name. Mm -hmm. You give it, yeah. Name. Because the name will be, you need to override the name. Mm -hmm. And then dash dash file or simply dash f, mm -hmm. then environment YAML. I think this is how it works. Well, I guess we will see. So now we're creating an environment okay. with a different name from that environment file. Yes. OK, so it says we made a new environment. And if we look, it says it downloaded some stuff. I wonder why it only downloaded these few things. And we yeah, also so see. A cache. Uh, it, it uses a cache. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we can also later discuss how to clear that cache. Yeah. But still, why is it only using the cache for four packages? Well, we don't have um, to solve this now. I don't know. And we see. Is it, is it only the cache for these three packages or the other way around? So I think everything else was cached. Yeah, exactly. Maybe the, maybe the cache went full or something. Hmm. Yeah. I'll try a conda list whether everything is there. So 
So conda ends list and we see there's the new environment. So I guess we activate it. We see conda list. Yeah, looks pretty similar. And now what do you want to do? Do you want to export the environment YAML and see if it's exactly the same? Yeah, that sounds good. And then we can dip a bit for two. Mm -hmm. What would be interesting is to check it on another machine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just wondering if this last number, if it would work on any OS system, or if you need to have exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So once I had a problem where actually with these extra numbers, I couldn't reproduce an anaconda environment from one place to another. Mm -hmm. And eventually I learned it was somehow related to this and moving to a different operating system, but I'm not an expert here. So like, Because well. I, I tend to not to have this only the version. Mm. I'm not sure really? this is any better. Yeah. No, I, I remove them. Uh, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So let's see. So what I've learned once... Wait, actually... Why do you have a, a, a difference with... So the difference is just the name. Oh, really? Okay, and the I prefix, thought they were so. a package. What they... Okay, yes. Yeah, like it was sort of confusing to me too, yeah, but me too. you know. <laughs> yeah, okay. So now we've reproduced the environment. Um, let's see. Should we talk about these build number things now or later? Actually, I'd like to demonstrate something. Actually, let's see. Conda and no build. Okay, so now these extra numbers are gone. So we'll have something that claims to be the same version, but it's not guaranteed to be the exact same package. And is that good or not? Well, I guess it depends on your use case. This, this is my interpretation of the yeah, yeah, yes, situation. Yes. Yeah. And maybe I can jump in here and say that mm -hmm. this is like one way of doing it, what we did, is that uh, we have an environment, we install the packages, and later we create the environment file. Mm -hmm. That's one way. Uh, the other way would be, and we can try it out, is to as first to actually write the environment file mm -hmm. and only install from the file. And that's what I prefer to do. Yeah. Because it's a bit closer to how I work also with Gregoire as the text in virtual environment. Because mm -hmm. what, what I don't like so much about these exported files is that they contain a lot of stuff, yeah. which is really good, but mm -hmm. I never actively installed it. Right. And it will it will pin everything to versions. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I prefer to do is that I like to list only the things that I actively installed. Of course, mm -hmm. then it will it has to resolve all the dependencies. Mm -hmm. which it will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I prefer the, the other strategy. Yeah. It, and then, then I also have it documented. So I kind of force myself to, when I want to install a new package, I, I will write it first into the environment.yaml and then I will install from it. Yeah. And, and then I also remember what I did. Yeah. Okay. So you update, uh, you do a conda update from your environment.yaml if you have already an environment or you clean it completely and you start again from scratch. Yeah, so I, I think I learned a new thing, a conda update. So I was doing <laughs> I was uh, doing it from scratch because I didn't know it was uh, possible to update it, but um, uh, in conda I update. The update. Yeah, okay. you can update from an environment, but I, yeah. I, I don't know if it's, it is exactly the same thing. Mm. Mm. So what I, did, what I do, same. and uh, I don't use it very often, is uh, to wipe it and install them mm. from the environment demo. The, mm. I and think since, it's good practice. Yeah, and since yeah. things are cached, then the, the reinstall doesn't take any time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we had a lot of threads going on here. So first is the update. 
So to make the new environment.yaml that file, environment file that is clean, how do you do this? Do you, mm, do you find an existing one and then delete everything and then make it again? Yeah. Or you only list the package you are using. Mm -hmm. yeah, like so here we would say, what yeah. did we install? Um, uh, NumPy and GDAI. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But I'd like to test something else that I read a few weeks ago, and I think I've never used it yet. So here I'm activating the sample project mm -hmm. again. Oh yeah, from the yes. So let's try it out. I yeah. read this somewhere, but haven't really tested it before. Let's see what happens. Oh, that's nice. So here's see. the environment YAML file, the name, the channels. And if you remember, these are the exact things we installed. And also the ones where we specified a version are listed. And when we didn't, it's not listed. But yeah, I, noticed... I didn't know that. Yep, it has been rebuilt, so that uh, yeah. throws away what I did until now because this is much nicer. Yeah. Yes, very nice. <laughs> but nice. I noticed pip is missing from here, so. Oh yeah, good that's... point. But did we install yeah. pip on that? Uh... Oh yes, uh, we see. We installed one uh, thing from pip. Yes. Run test from there. Yes. So it's not. So I guess that you'd have to copy there. I wonder what this will say on the this one. Okay, and that shows uh, yes. everything. Yes, because that's what we did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. And also we're loving your comments from chat. So indeed, this no build option is, uh, seems to be great for exporting to different operating systems. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Oh, okay. The no builds, I didn't know the from history, I didn't know. So that's yeah. very nice. Yeah, me neither. But yeah. I will use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we can make the environments, we export them. When would the build numbers or all of the versions be useful? It depends what you want. No? <laughs> At least the build number, I'm not sure this is. Uh... Yeah. Do you use it, the build number? Well. I don't, but I, I don't use so. Conda. Like I create environments and I don't think much and then it, well, sort of like, I've never really exported them very much, at least not so systematically. Um, I use a version. I like to have the version number. Mm -hmm. If I want to share the environment with someone mm -hmm. and do a, the same work yeah i guess if your software is so delicate that some other library changing a version or even the build could affect your results then you would make an environment file that has these but ideally also one without these so basically you yes. have the list of what you actually need and then the full list of what currently works so for example maybe you have a paper and you say, here's the environment with all the builds and everything I used for the paper. But then you have your working copy. And then for the next paper, you reinstall from that and then rebuild it. I've never actually done this, but I guess it makes sense. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. Yeah. OK. Although personally, for most of my projects, I do it without the version numbers and so on, figuring that when a version fails, like when an update makes something not work, I want to know right away and then I will fix it. My things aren't so um, important like a paper that it has to be right or the same all the time. If you know, you know, like in Binder, um, a notebook situation, mm -hmm. we would probably want to specify the versions. Mm, yeah. Right. So, um, hmm. 
Next up is creating a package. So this is not something I can demonstrate. So who would like to be our... Well, you can demonstrate. I, I can tell you what to do. Oh, OK. So <laughs> um, hmm, what should I do? Should I make it out of the Sphinx sample lesson, maybe? Uh, oh, you want to or... create a... Do we show it from like scratch or from... Oh, from conduct part or what do you want to show? Yeah, it's up to you. You're the one that knows what's practical here. Um, I would use conduct part for this. I okay. mean, without really tradition, I don't know. Yeah, which is probably the simplest. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can do a conduct this. Yeah, yeah, if you want. Um, Actually, but you need to install this uh, uh, conduct this. Okay. So should I, how much, how much time does this take? Because we have 15 minutes left. Yeah, it takes a bit of time, so it's maybe too much yeah. time. Should we save it for a future thing? Can someone, does someone have an existing package to demonstrate that we can show? So. Oh, you can take any uh, package on, uh on conda port and we can mm. look at it. Okay. Mm. Does someone else want to show? What do you want to show? I go so, I mean do you have a do you have an example of some some package yeah. that we could look at? Um, I have the last package I did, which yeah. is maybe not super fancy. Oh that's good. I think that's the best example. I can show this yeah. called um it's, uh, uh, yeah, and also note this GitHub organization has eleven thousand repositories. Yeah, <laughs> but it's just not how you would start. So you would start yeah. first to fork um, a very simple repository, mm -hmm. which is uh, if you run this conduct port uh, trace. Mm -hmm. Can you send me a link somehow? Yes. I can send you the link. Um, yeah, in which chat do you want to have it? Mm. Maybe on that one. Yes. Can you see it? Okay. Yes. So if you click on contribute. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you have this conda for stage recipes if you want to add a new recipe. Uh, yeah, the add oh, go up. Click on add ah, a recipe. Okay. Yeah. So it's, let's mm -hmm. say you you have a new package. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you or, will have this conda. Mm -hmm. This this is the one you will fork, and okay. it's it's a very simple one. Mm -hmm. It looks like there are a bunch of files, but what is yeah. important is the recipe. Uh, folder. That's the only part that you will need. Okay. And there's example. Yeah. And there's so is meta one that file. includes everything. So you will mostly write one file, which mm -hmm. is this meta.yaml. Yeah. Where you will explain where you take the package. So here, yeah. this one example is taking from uh, PyPy. From PyPy. And it so it's not not even a build needed. Yeah. Yeah. Build okay. There's a build number. Yeah, the build thing. number needs to be zero the first time. Mm -hmm. And then you have the requirements, yeah. which is very much like in the environment of YAML. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But then it's uh, split in what you need to build and what you need yeah. to run. Okay. And you have a Got test it. part. So what is nice is you have like a template already, mm -hmm. which you need to change for your own package. Yeah. And you have tools already uh, mm -hmm. if to create this template from your own uh, package if you want. I if see. You want to start from scratch. Yeah. Description. Okay, and then basically, if you fill this out and then follow some more instructions, you can make it. I mean, you fork this repository, you write 
your fa you create a new branch, mm -hmm. you write your recipe, and then you uh, make a pull request to mm -hmm. this one, and then everything will be automated, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you will get your own repository. So this is why there are thousands of uh, repository in this kind of approach. Mm -hmm. And it, it will be the name of your package, hyphen, and this feedstock. Yeah. And then in the future, do you update your repository? Exactly. So in the future, you only update this particular mm -hmm. stock, which is yours. Yeah. OK. So maybe we can have a live demo or a bigger demo of this later. Yeah. OK. So we already talked about what is Conda Forge. Um, do you want to talk about the alias for creating these things, Radovan? Oh, yes. Yes, I can do it. Can you take the screen share? Okay. I'm transferring to you. Mm -hmm. And here we are. So this is an alias that I created today. Um, because just for the show, I reinstalled um, Miniconda, and the, I will first show what it does and then how I do it. So let's create an example. And in the example, I will create this environmental demo. Name, example, dependencies, whoops. Dependencies, not by pandas, that's it. Mm -hmm. So no channel, or default mm. channel? No, I think it's oh, okay, okay for panda. Yeah, yeah I guess channel. we can do default. So how do I do channels again? It would be channel, like this? Uh, yes, channels, and then it's a list under it. But this is, yeah. Yes. yes. Is it channel or channels? Uh, plural. OK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's try that. And now the, the alias that I will use <coughs> is what is defined in, in fish. But what it <coughs> that I do is I activate Miniconda as part of the alias. Mm -hmm. So this is similar to uh, your okay. yes. Miniconda. Yes, to what we had, uh, yeah. Yeah. Then if I wanted to create an um, environment, and here I want mm. the environment to be in in my folder here. I don't want it to be somewhere else. Mm -hmm. OK, yeah. Because then I don't have to remember cleaning it up. It will be just here, and I can just mm -hmm. delete it. So I create a new environment in this place from this file, and then I activate it. So let's try CE conda environment. And now it goes through and downloads the things. Maybe they are cached because I tried that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I tried it with the default uh, channel. So oh, yeah. I think it needs to do some fetching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what I like about this is that yeah, it forces me to document my dependencies. And I can then, if I have such a file there, I can just go into the folder and I can type CE. Because if this environment already exists, mm -hmm. then it will only activate it. Mm -hmm. well, that's and nice, because if you want to remove it, you just delete the folder. Yeah. Then I just delete the folder and it's gone. That's really nice. Yeah. I need to investigate whether, whether it installs something else into other places, but I, mm, I don't think so. Yeah. And since I started doing this with virtual environments, also inspired by Radovan yeah. some months ago, yeah. like it became much more refreshing to deal with these dependencies. Like any time I would try to run something and it didn't have the dependencies, it just immediately delete the virtual environment and reinstall. And if something mm -hmm. doesn't work, then I update the requirements file to fix it instead of trying to fix it by hand. And yeah, if I that's can't, nice. And if I can't do that, then I know there's a problem with mm -hmm. me or my requirements. Like, and, yeah. you know, 
that has to be fixed. Yep. So this works now. Mm -hmm. and, and if I don't like it anymore, I will deactivate. No, Conda deactivate. Mm -hmm. And I just go out and I delete the report, the directory, and everything's gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very yep. clean. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to show. I think we, we should also show how we remove environments. <gasps> right, yeah. yeah. In the Shibashi. Way. Mm -hmm. Do you want to demonstrate or me? Maybe it's better if you do because I have only this very isolated. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't have any <laughs> global environments. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, it is me. So here we are. We want to end up cleaning up stuff. Uh, we list our environments every so often and we see what we've got. So we see some things which I'm not using and it's stored in this other path. So let's get rid of it. So what's the command for that? Is it n delete, remove? I actually so don't know. So the thing that in my cheat sheet says uh, mm -hmm. conda remove oh. dash dash name and the name yeah, of the yeah. Uh, the name of the environment, and mm -hmm. then I have also dash dash all. Yes. I, I don't know what happens without the all. It doesn't remove everything. Yeah. Oh. So this will. This should do it. So what does, what stays if, it's, not all. Not uh, no idea. <laughs> I see there okay. are some uh, leftover, and uh, I always use yeah. this minus minus all. Oh. Um, what I remember, I don't know if this is still true, but if you create many environments and you don't and you delete and you replace, at some mm -hmm. point it fills up your disk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you say, I removed it, so it shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. so it does something more. But it's still there. Okay. Yeah, so this Let's see. minus minus all yeah. will clean it completely. But okay. I haven't investigated in detail yeah. Yeah. what this does. Honestly. So an, an alternative way to suggest it by check, uh, which mm -hmm. is conda and remove minus n the name. Oh yeah, okay. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah. Let's and try it. Another question it. about colors. We will come back to that. Actually, mm -hmm. this is interesting. Look, I did remove without all, and it says no package name supplied. So maybe like conda remove removes one package or whatever you ask, and then all means remove the whole environment. Let's see. So let's use the suggestion and we're, uh, Okay, and it's gone. So, yeah. Mm, I see. So the suggestion is that we need to use conva n to manage the environment, which I think, yeah. Like but that's any... not what I do normally. Hmm. But but I use this minus minus all. Yeah. Let's ask for help. So it removes all packages as in the whole environment. Well, the command itself says remove a list of packages from a specified environment. Uh, okay. the oh, like the dependencies? Remove. Is it like the dependencies? Or? And conda n. So it seems like the all command transforms it from removing packages to removing the whole environment. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So it seems that conda remove is the opposite of conda install. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And dash dash all is to get rid of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I can also say that if, if you want to get rid of all the cached files. Oh yeah, good. Yes, that's you can, mm. but I'm not sure you want to do it now, but it's conda yeah. clean dash dash all, so then we can clean up all the caches, cache, okay. cache stuff. But so conda clean does remove. Okay. So where are the caches stored? 
uh, I think it's still in the same uh, in your mini conda. There is a folder mm. with all the tarball mm -hmm. in the PTT. Okay, yeah. So here we see what certainly looks like. So if you are working on a remote machine and install one environment, I think it's mm. good to, uh, to clean. Yeah. I think this can be interesting on a cluster where you have the disk open yeah. and you can fill mm -hmm. up everything. Right. Here I see it's 400 megabytes of stuff. Well, and now fine. it says one gigabyte of stuff. What's the difference here? Pass the cleanup. Well, it proposed a bunch of stuff to clean up. Okay, Miniconda three packages. Oh, because it's uh, yeah plus four hundred megabytes. Oh. And then it posted one. Is it the leftover? This and one? then. Oh yeah, because it will yeah. remove uh, all the packages plus the libraries inside because it, it's uncompressed. The package and there are two labels of three. Mm -hmm. I think you can keep the package, uh, yeah. and but remove the sub the folder, or mm -hmm. you can remove both. Which you do? Uh, oh. Okay. Okay. Is there a way to undo the init of my shell file? You need to know you clean your. <laughs> Your bash. Oh. Yeah, the way the way I did it is to go into the bash RC and uh, comment out. What yeah, it do the same. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of this option to conda in it? Oh, I never tried. That seems interesting. Oh. Oh. What? Why does it say all of that stuff? Because it's you still Modified. have. Uh, yeah, but now your your bash RC is probably clean. Yeah, it looks clean. Oh, but mm -hmm. that's good. Actually. So it removed everything? Yeah. yeah, it actually yes. worked. Clean your bash. Yeah, reverse. That's actually a good. Very good. Then, for people. Richard. <laughs> yes. Nice discovery. Nothing important. Yes. Well, the discovery is basically running dash h. So maybe we should run dash yes. h more often. Okay. That's, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. So the last thing on the list was Mamba and Micro Mamba. Wait, it's Micro Mamba, not Mini Mamba? You just want to talk about what this is. This is an alternative to Conda Package so, Manager. So I had started it here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you see, fast. Mamba. <laughs> I think it was uh, initially they started this project because they found Conda was too slow. So how do I get Micro Mamba? From Conda. From Conda Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I tried it, but then I didn't really know where am I actually, like which one, <laughs> in which Conda am I? Mm. <laughs> Is Mamba something you install to replace Miniconda, or you install Miniconda, then you install Mamba and use it to install things? Yes, the latter. The latter. Okay, yeah. so here I am. So maybe installing Mamba in my base environment is okay. Do you think so? I, I don't think it touches my base environment. <laughs> It's uh -huh. probably okay for for the demo. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, um, you could have uh, written Mamba at the same line. Yeah. Oh yeah, I should have done that. Okay. Can't install Mamba. Uh, oh, but you need to specify Conda Forge. Yeah. Conda Forge, okay. And then. Okay, I 
this one done. And while it's installing, I can also comment that we could have even a bit of a discussion on the chat. I think we we are happy about suggestions. Yeah. And this is suggestions on what to. Yeah. So generally happy about questions and suggestions. Mm. Okay. There's also a question about uh, timing of colors, but maybe we can take it at the end. Uh, okay. So there is a program called Mamba install. So does Mamba have these things like Mamba init and adjusting yes. your shell? It has the, so it has, I think the same command line interface. So you can do Mamba help and it will see the same. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, okay. So init isn't there, it seems. Install, create, list, search, run, info, clean. I haven't used it really beyond this point. You have a nice logo. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure there are so many packages. Mm. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Does Mamba use thing. the same packages as Conda? Like, does I it... think it was my feeling, but I wasn't mm. sure. I, I thought so, that you can, like, Mamba install from Condaforge. Okay, Maybe I'm pretty it. sure this will not work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Con what have you done? Mamba activate. So now, Conda activate pandas did not work. I did oh, Mamba not, not create Conda, pandas. Mamba. Yeah, but then you do a, a Mamba activate Conda. But it says it doesn't work. Maybe. Oh, it says use Conda activate. Actually, is this the same thing? I understood you could use this uh, in activate. Uh, hmm. Well, I guess it's something that we don't know. Um, yeah. hmm. Well, we're Maybe about we running out of time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe I, we I, can. I don't know much more. How about we demonstrate how we search the web for something? Sure. I'm searching for Mamba activate environment. Let's see. So I get now you can activate the base environment. I'll create other environment that you want to see. Uh, there's micro Mamba shell init. Hmm. So there is some shell in it thing. Does this micro mamba to install? It's micro mamba is an is a small is it a small version or is yeah, a tiny it's, version? It's really a tiny version, and there's yeah. somewhere it says experimental. Mm. So maybe it's it's too early for that. Yeah. I mean the the overall project. I don't think this is very old project. I know. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, so, there is not even a version of uh, release 1.0, it's 0 0.4.1. Yeah. So maybe it's just you install Mamba inside of whatever environment you need to manage, and then you install packages that way. Well, I guess we've gone beyond the instruction manual goal we set out to have, and we've demonstrated we can install something. So should we summarize and wrap up? Yeah. Sounds okay. Right. Yeah.
So yeah, so here we've demonstrated what you can do with Anaconda and Conda. And really this is how at least I use it on a daily basis. And I think probably and in Radovan too. Would you say so? Yes. yes, I think yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay. And I learned a few tricks. <laughs> That's yes. nice. Yes, this is from yeah, history. Me too. That's really awesome. Yes. And also the mm -hmm. init reverse. Yes. Mm -hmm. Really great find. Yeah. So, yeah. So hopefully, after watching this, you're well prepared to go installing Anaconda on whatever you need. So whether it is your own computer or your cluster or even both so you can transfer stuff between them easily and make the environment that yaml file so that other people can reuse your software mm. yeah and sort of see the limit of what our knowledge is so what we would like to start doing in the future but haven't started yet super okay yeah. Thanks everybody so, for watching and so uh, yeah, thanks. Also I learned new things, so thanks for teaching me. So yeah. Yes, thanks, yes. That's yeah. always good. So we will hopefully see you next week at the same time. Yeah. I also want to answer this not, nothing about Conda, but I want to answer one question that came up in the chat, which was about mm -hmm. what color scheme I don't know whether it was me or Richard's domino, but if it was the darker one, it was mine. So this is a default domino in uh, it's a default terminal, but I use fish as a shell. It's an all, all my fish configuration, a little bit customized. And the nice colors, I think they come from me using Exa instead of mm. LS. Mm, yes, that's yeah. nice. I've just shared your screen again to the stream. Oh, yeah. so. so if this is this one, then it is. Yeah, like I like this. it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So it's actually not LS, this is. Uh, this is uh, functions LS. Yeah, mm -hmm. I use XR. And it's uh, all my fish. You should teach us uh, all your tricks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we should do another session on that. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Our setups. Yeah. What should we talk uh, actually, about? Actually, it helps a lot to have a nice environment. Yeah, yeah. because we are, I mean, I spend a couple of hours every day in this, so it <laughs> better be nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what should we talk about next week? We should go ahead and decide so we don't end up postponing and then seeing. So the ideas I see are our environments and how we make them easy to use. Or one thing that we got inspired from from the workshop, Code Refinery workshop today is talking about Git Annex and how it works. Which is something mm -hmm. I'd be interested in. Yeah, me too. Um, I don't know much about yeah. it. So, any votes from our audience or something else? I'd really like to decide now, even if it's not perfect, at least we know. And knowing early is better than deciding the perfect thing. Yeah. Should we roll a dice? Uh, there's a suggestion, workflow and steps when starting a new research project. This was one or two weeks ago we actually talked about this. Yeah, but we didn't go into much detail. The other yeah. suggestion that came up which I liked was like cluster etiquette. Mm. What oh yeah. To a, what to do on a cluster and what uh, mm -hmm. not to do. It could be combined with the Git Annex, I think. Mm -hmm. We could also talk okay. about like our shells and editors, but maybe that's another thing. Yeah. So what yeah, about cookie cutters? Mm. Yeah. No much about this. So. Yeah. So, 
suggestions. You could do a half and half. Um, I could imagine like git annex and mm -hmm. cluster etiquette. Okay. Need bits together. And... Yeah. Okay, that's good. So we have our topic. Super. Okay. Thanks for listening Great. and watching. Thanks everyone for watching. If you have any other questions, we can stick around and answer, but otherwise I'll stop the recording. Okay, bye everyone. See you next week. Bye. See you. Bye.